Tomorrow, the House Judiciary Committee will be discussing a series of antitrust bills that target tech giants like Amazon, Facebook, and Google with an aim to make it harder to finalize big tech mergers. But where does the fight against conservative censorship stand? Well, let's ask the man leading the fight, ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. Congressman, welcome back to the show. You bet. Good to be with you tonight. All right. So yesterday you wrote a letter to Microsoft's president asking him to explain bias against conservatives, specifically about censoring user content on whether it's posting on Hunter Biden or the origins of COVID, which we've seen a lot lately. Republicans keep driving this point, however, about censoring the right and conservatives. I do see a lot of times, congressmen, that we hear about these doctors or individuals, biologists that are worried about being censored for their comments on the origins of COVID. This seems to be a bipartisan issue about being censored. So is there a desire to broaden this topic to make it about censoring Americans opposed to just conservatives? Well, yeah. I mean, look, we, we, do you believe in the First Amendment? Do you believe in free speech? Do you think Americans should be able to speak out in a political fashion and not be harassed for doing so or not be censored for doing so? Big tech is out to get conservatives. Big tech has proven that time and time. We get the sitting president of the United States taken off of every single social media platform. So uh, the, uh, unfortunately, the legislation that the Democrats are bringing forward tomorrow doesn't address that problem. What it does, in my judgment, is it marries up big tech with big government to further uh, to exacerbate the problem, to make the problem even worse. And that is that is our concern. What we need is legislation that, that will address the censorship issue, address the fact that they got liability protection, these big tech companies. That's the kind of legislation we need. And that's what we're working on as Republicans. But what's coming forward tomorrow, I don't think it's going to help the situation one bit. I think it's going to make the situation worse. Congressman, good to see you. you you've said you that Democrats are excluding Microsoft from these antitrust bills. Why do they seem to be protecting Microsoft? Good question. And when the, one of the sponsors of the legislation, the Democrat chair of the antitrust subcommittee in, in, in judiciary, when he was asked about this, he said, well, this is going to be up to the FTC, whether Microsoft is actually covered by the legislation the Democrats are bringing forward. We'll, we'll just have to see. But my, con- my concern is, as I said before, when you have this censorship taking place and then yet this legislation doesn't do anything but give more power to the FTC, and oh, by the way, guys, the FTC that is now chaired by Lena Khan, guess where Lena Khan worked before she went to the FTC last week? She worked for Jerry Nadler and David Cicilline as part of the House Democrats on the Judiciary Committee. My guess is she probably had a big part in writing the legislation that now gives her all the power at the FTC to further, I think, come after conservatives and not address the problem that we all care about, which is the censorship of Newsmax, the censorship of, of uh, I mean, ask yourself this question. Democrats a few months ago wrote a letter to all the big carriers saying, hey, will you start looking at taking Fox, Newsmax, One American News off your network, off your platform? Do you actually think those same Democrats now want to deal with the censorship issue? I don't think so. So that, that again, is our, our concern about what's, gonna, uh, what's, what's brought in front of the committee tomorrow. Mm. Congressman, we always appreciate you holding their feet to the fire on this topic. We'll have to keep a pulse on what happens tomorrow. But I do want to switch gears with you. We are seeing gas prices rise um, as we see inflation in many different areas of our economy. Jen Psaki actually responded to one of your tweets about Biden's economy saying this. She tweeted, you forgot to mention that gas prices are the same now as they were in June of 2018, or that this time last year, unemployment was 11.1%. Today, it's 5.8% at POTUS, agrees families shouldn't pay more at the pump. That's why he's opposed to GOP proposals to raise the gas tax. All right, so the president's handling of the economy, it's one thing, but many Democrats now are actually arguing that gas prices are going up because of the high demand now. We're seeing the economy back open, people are traveling. What's your response to that? Well, my first response is must have struck a nerve. I mean, the idea they respond to a tweet for the, the, the president's press secretary and the president's chief of staff, I guess, responding to a tweet where we just point out the facts, what the price was a year ago, what the price is today. I mean, Democrats are wrong on all their policies. Democrat governors have kept their states locked down. They, they've increased spending at a crazy amount. And they're proposing a six trillion dollar budget. Uh, they, they, they pay people not to work with the unemployment compensation that they want to keep renewing. And on top of all that, they're getting ready to raise taxes. And that doesn't mention, when you get specifically to gas price issues, that doesn't mention the fact that President Biden canceled the pipeline. So come on, I'm sorry that there's inflation. I wish there wasn't, but it's driven by the ridiculous spending of the Democrats in every single policy area 
they've been wrong. So I guess they have to talk about something. So why not just come after Jim Jordan, who's actually just simply posting the facts? Wow. The facts is for sure. Congressman Jordan, always good to see you. Thanks for being here with us tonight. You bet. Thank you.